Fox News alert tonight in what would be a long shot move to change the Michigan electors. We've learned that President Trump has reportedly summoned Michigan Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky and House Speaker Lee Chatfield to the White House for an extraordinary meeting tomorrow. Just hours before the news broke, the Trump campaign dropped its federal lawsuit in Michigan challenging the state's vote tallies. Now it seems that they are headed in a different direction here. So joining me now, Guy Benson, host of The Guy Benson Show and Fox News contributor. Guy, good to have you with us this evening. So, Hi, Martha. I mean, you know, all of this is confusing. <laughs> um, there are, there's actually, uh, the Wayne canvassing board is the, are the two Republicans and Democrats that have been fighting uh, that we've been watching on Zoom lately, and they've gone back and forth on their decision. Now they say that they don't want to certify um, tonight, I just want to get everybody up to speed on some news that just broke a few moments ago, which is that one of the two Republican members of the four-member Michigan canvassing board, the state canvassing board, Norman Schinkel, says that he is leaning toward asking for a delay in certification and calling for an audit of the state. He says if there are concerns that people have across the state, then we're going to delay the certification past Monday. Your thoughts on what's going on there? Well, the Trump campaign in that press conference today claimed that they dropped their Michigan suit because they got their desired remedy, which was a delay in the certification in Wayne County, which isn't what happened. They did certify in Wayne County. Now you're asking for, like, take backs from the Republicans, but I'm not really sure that's how that works, legally speaking. What you just described would be a significant update should the other Republican go along with it and there's some sort of a, a stalemate in the state of Michigan on the deadline for certification and whether there's some sort of a follow-up investigation uh, or whatever word they want to use to describe it for that to take place. We're still talking about a pretty limited timeline here uh, to have an audit. So. I think that the story that we led with here in the segment about these lawmakers, these leaders from Michigan, the Republican Party, who lead the state legislature being summoned to Washington by the president, I don't think it's totally out of bounds by any stretch for people to wonder, okay, you look at the context, you look at the timing, why is this happening? Why is the president asking these lawmakers to come to Washington? And is he going to try to apply some pressure on them to perhaps... I don't know, put in a different slate of electors through the state legislature doing an end run around the voters of Michigan. That's at least part of the speculation. Uh, I think we should wait and keep our powder dry and see what actually happens. But I think people asking those questions and maybe drawing those conclusions, it's not completely baseless, right? You can connect a few dots here. Mm -hmm. It's plausible. It is plausible. And, you know, we have seen in 2016, there were a few electors whose states voted for President Trump, who became what is called a faithless elector. And then they did right. not put their electors towards President Trump in the end. Now, just going through what Michigan law is, it says Mich Michigan law does not include a provision for the legislature to directly select electors or to award electors to anyone other than the person who received the most votes. And we know that Joe Biden's ahead by 150,000 votes in Michigan. So this, uh, this route does seem like a long shot. Oh, and it's an extreme long shot. And both of the Republican leaders that are coming to Washington for this meeting tomorrow are on the record saying, we're not going to do anything like that. And I think that's the right thing for them to say. And I know that tensions are high and frustration is high and suspicion is high among many people in this country, particularly Trump supporters. But I think just in a counterfactual or a hypothetical, if four years ago we saw exactly this type of machination from Democrats, where President Trump had won a state or two, and then Hillary Clinton and her campaign said, well, the people have spoken, but we're not really sure because Russia maybe have, maybe they were involved. A lot of Democrats believe that, still believe that, even though there's no basis that they changed any votes. Uh, that's a popular belief on the left. If the Clinton campaign said, we don't think this is fair or legitimate, let's wait, or let's maybe see what the legislatures might be able to do to put different electors in there and maybe put us in the White House. And Barack Obama is going to summon some Democrats from these states to say, hey, guys, what are you doing uh, in your states? Let's see what we might be able to do here. I think conservatives would rightly have been in the streets screaming their heads off, and I would have been right there with them mm -hmm. because that's not what we do in this country. That would be a shocking departure from our system of governance and the transfer of power in this country. 
And so I think this is a very dangerous path to even consider, let alone go down. I am very suspicious or skeptical, I should say, that we're going to get even close to it. But the fact that we're talking about it, frankly, is unsettling. Yeah, there, there's some that uh, that say that the seeds of distrust in the election are sort of paving the way for uh, the president to say that, you know, that, that it, it was illegitimate over the course of the next few years if he decides that he wants to run again. Um, and we know that on Hillary Clinton's side, she told Joe Biden not to concede under any circumstances in this election. So it's been fraught Correct. on both sides uh, from day one. And who knows what we would be seeing on their side if, uh, if the outcome had been, had been different. Guy, thank you. Always great to have you with us. Thanks for being here thank tonight. Thank you.